Hi there, in this video we are going to learn how the scene data is structured and organized in Houdini. Hierarchy is a key concept, not just in every 3D application, but in real life. Therefore, it is very likely that you already know this concept as it is applied in a wide variety of fields. Nevertheless, it is important to understand the specific application in Houdini. A hierarchy is an arrangement of items that are organized according to some criteria. The most common example is how people are organized within companies into levels according to the authority they have. Another common hierarchical structure is the one we find in a computer file finder or explorer. You could have a storage location in which your files are organized by categories. For instance, the first categorization could be according to the type of files, documents, movies and music. In a second categorization, in documents, you could have in and out files. In movies, you could have action or and sci-fi. And in music, you could have classic, rock and trance. You could go even further by having subcategories. For instance, inside music classic, you could have categories for each artist. And in the end, you have your files. Houdini's main structure is organizing networks, exactly like a computer's file system, where networks are like folders and nodes are like files. Although Houdini lets you work in the 3D view using the shelf tools without having to worry about nodes and networks, however, an understanding of networks is essential for getting the most out of Houdini. That's why we are going to review Houdini's structure even without the 3D viewer. For this purpose, I have set up a Houdini interface only with the 3 view at the left pane and the network view at the right pane. Don't worry about the layout or menus or icons. For now, it is more important to be focused on the concepts. In this first screenshot, we can see the root network and now, if we expand it, we can see that the root network contains six folders, but as we are in Houdini, it would be better to say six networks. These six networks are also known as contexts. In white characters, I have placed the current names for each of these networks, and in gray characters, we can see the legacy or old school acronyms and descriptions. The first network, Motion FX, is also known as CHOP that stands for Channel Operators. In this context, you create motion effects for your objects and components. The second network, Compositing, is also known as COP that stands for Compositing Operators. In this context, you composite your render images to achieve your final shot. The third network, Bex Builder, is also known as Materials Network. This is a relatively new network. Previously, all materials and shaders were managed in the shop context, but the mat context was created specifically to manage materials. The fourth network, objects, is also known as scene objects, and we could say it is the main network or context in Houdini. In this context, you create and put your characters, models, props, and lights. So, in this context, you normally put subnetworks that act as containers, and these subnetworks not only can hold geometry networks, but also dynamic networks. In this example, the object or network name Object01 is a geometry container, and inside it has two geometry nodes, a sphere and a torus. These geometry nodes are also known as SOPs, that stands for surface operators. The second object named Dynamic01 is a DOP network. DOP stands for Dynamic Operator. This network contains dynamic nodes. Even further, in the OBJ context, you can put any other type of networks. For instance, let's create another network named Object02. Now, let's dive inside and let's create one for geometries 
subnetwork, one for materials, material network, and one for dynamic or simulations, dub network. As you can see, in one object, we have three different types of networks. This is useful when you want to put all the data, geometry, shaders, materials, simulations, in one location so that you can export it as a complete asset to another project or another application. The fifth network, Outputs, is also known as a ROP that stands for Render Output Operators. In this context, you create the nodes to output your render images. Currently, Mantra is the renderer engine in Houdini. This is a very good quality renderer, but is one of the slowest renderers. In the upcoming 18 version, a brand new renderer is coming, initially in beta version. This renderer is named Karma and is based on the Hydra framework from Pixar. The sixth network, Shader, is also known as Shop, that stands for Shader Operators. In this context, you create shaders, but you can also create materials networks for third-party renderers. Once again, Houdini structure works exactly like a computer's file system, where networks are like folders and nodes are like files. Being aware of this will make your life easier with navigation and data management in the program. Although you can see your actual location or path at the top left of the network tab, at least while starting the learning process, try to keep the tree view open so that you can see clearly how the data is managed and organized. It is important to mention that in the upcoming Houdini release, version 18, the implementation of Solaris will bring a new context called LOPs or Lighting Operators that brings native USD support to Houdini to allow for comprehensive look development, layout and lighting workflows. By the way, USD stands for Universal Scene Description. That concludes this video. In the next one, we'll be reviewing a concept that gives Houdini great power and flexibility and makes it stand out over the other 3D applications. We'll be reviewing the concept of Procedural. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you soon in the next one.